Hall of Fame is all about honoring the rarest of rare, especially those who have pushed the boundaries of success in whatever endeavors they pursue. Through this award, we strive to create role models for the Indian migrant community in our new country of residence. We believe that the rest of the community takes pride and inspiration from the honors while showering their generous appreciation on those who eventually take home the honors. I'd now like to request the following dignitaries to join us on stage. Honorable David Parker, Honorable Paul Goldsmith, Priyanka Radhakrishnan, and Kanwaljeet Singh Bakshi for the award ceremony. Honourable David Parker to do the honours and announce the award. Uh, congratulations, Sir Anand Satanyan. I would go the The name of Right Honourable Sir Anand Satyanand does not need any introduction. A former lawyer, judge and ombudsman, Sir Anand Satyanand rose to the highest public office that this country can offer to anyone when he served as the 19th Governor General of New Zealand from 2006 to 2011. The list of crucial government and intergovernmental leadership positions that he has held in the past and continues to hold as of now is long and illustrious. Born and raised in Auckland to a Fiji Indian family in 1944, Sir Anand attended Sacred Heart College and graduated with a Bachelor of Law from the University of Auckland in 1970. In 1982, he was appointed as the District Court Judge with a jury trial warrant working in Palmerston North and then in a number of Auckland courts. During this time, he was involved in the development of judicial orientation and professional education programs and served as a prison board chairman and on the National Parole Board. In 1995, he was appointed as a parliamentary ombudsman, serving two five-year terms. In 2011, he received Indian the government's most prestigious award that can be offered to a person of Indian origin, the Pravasi Bharatiya Samman. On the family and community front, he has been married to Susan Sharp since 1970 and they have three children and several grandchildren. Sir Anand has contributed immensely and exemplarily in New Zealand's public life in the last five decades and continues to bring the same passion, energy and leadership in his day-to-day -day engagement with the wider community. He is indeed one of the most deserving Kiwi Indian sons who has risen to the highest office of this land through his sheer hard work diligence and commitment. We are honoured to induct him into the Indian Weekenders Kiwi Indian Hall of Fame 2019. Can we now request all the dignitaries, dignitaries to kindly take their seats and request the awardee to come and give the acceptance speech, sir? Sir, this way, sir.
Right Honourable Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, uh, members of Parliament, uh, members of local government, the Honourable Phil Goff, uh, distinguished guests, otherwise if I can speak of you in that way, uh, Bahav Dillon, uh, members of the Indian Weekender, as they have been called tonight, movers and shakers, ladies and gentlemen. Although in a long life I've had my share of being at glittering occasions, this one is so clearly very special. And I'm overwhelmed by the production and the warm-hearted reaction that you all exhibit by your presence. In looking at that amazing photo and video montage, that preceded the crescendo and climax. It might be thought that I am someone whose life has been completely consumed by a life of privilege and entitlement. In accepting the award and in joining an illustrious lineup of people, such as Dr. Chelaraj Benjamin, Dame Suki Turner, Dr. Kantilal Patel, Kanwaljit Singh Bakshi, Dr. Sharad Paul, and His Honor Judge Ajit Singh. I am bound to formulate both thanks as I ought, but also to offer a small rejoinder about privilege and entitlement. I have been singled out to be the recipient of a number of preferments as a lawyer, judge, ombudsman, and governor general of our country. All of those appointments in which I have endeavored to undertake to the best of my professional and personal ability have not been born out of privilege and entitlement. An occasion like this evening is a good opportunity to reflect on one's background of who one is and where from. I am the grandson of migrants from India to Fiji who came there under the indentured labor scheme which ended 100 years ago in a few months time. My own parents were in turn students and migrants to New Zealand, initially in the Depression, my wife coming, and my father coming to school in New Zealand in Whanganui on scholarship from Fiji in 1927, and then to the Otago University to train as a doctor, and my mother coming as a Karatani nurse trainee in 1938. The onset of wartime led to my father not returning to Fiji, as had been plan A, but remaining here, marrying my mother, and working for the Auckland Hospital just across Grafton Bridge at the end of the war, before being granted permanent residence because he had been kept back working for in the hospital system during the war. He then commenced a career as an Auckland GP for some 45 years, first in Ponsonby and then in Glen Innes. This part of Auckland, where this hotel stands on the Karangahape Ridge, remains warmly within my own memory and that of our family. The site of this hotel, now called the Cordis, was formerly the premises of Seabrook Fouds, the Austin distributors, from which in 1954, my father bought his first new car at the age of 40. That car was an Austin Somerset, and what a joy it was to be driven in it, including going down Liverpool Street, which is just over to my left, which my brother and I would kid ourselves was the steepest street in the world. And we used to do that because our friend, our family friend Santa Singh, 
had a, had a small warehouse at the, at the street at the bottom from which he sold uh, rice and flour, which, of which we were customers. My father was a person who said to his children, and notably myself as the older one, the only thing that matters is the quality of your work and the soundness of your judgment. <coughs> My mother applied the same thinking, and it is good to think of them and beyond on an evening like this. It is also good to think of my own family who have stood by their husband, father and grandfather in a busy professional life. Regrettably, because of a serious illness occasioned to a favorite close relation, my wife Susan has had to cancel out of being present this evening and she flew to Sydney yesterday afternoon. I do, however, have my daughter Anya here standing in Susan's stead. May I close by thanking the organisers for all their efforts in this event, evoking community pride and for my inclusion in it, with the award which, as I hope I make obvious, I accept with gratitude. Tēnā koto katoa. Kiora Koto, Danbad, Shukriar, Danbad. <laughs>